Welcome to the Hassle-Free Cash Flow Minute. This is professional investor David Campbell, and I'm happy to talk with you today about three different types of income classifications. In this particular lesson, we'll be talking about gross scheduled income, which we'll abbreviate as GSI, adjusted gross income, which is AGI, and net operating income, which is NOI. Today's lesson is helping you as an investor or prospective investor understand the math behind real estate investing, and that is a way to help you make more educated decisions as an investor. Let's get started. Gross scheduled income is how much income is supposed to come from the property in a perfect world. And it's gross. You know, for example, your gross paycheck would be how much money your employer pays you before they deduct anything uh, out of it. So let's say um, your gross scheduled income from the property assumes 100% occupancy, and it assumes that you get the market rent and that there's no concessions. Uh, as an investor, the gross scheduled income is important, but make sure that you're not making your buy decision using the GSI. You're going to want to be using other types of income. Uh, let's do a case study. So gross schedule income, let's assume that you've decided this property could rent for $1,000 a month. Then you would take the monthly rent times 12, and you would get the annual number. And all of the incomes that we're talking about in this lesson are annual numbers. So we're looking at $12,000 of gross scheduled income. Let's talk about adjusted gross income or AGI. Adjusted gross income is the gross scheduled income, which we just calculated, minus three things. We're going to take out vacancy rate, we're going to take out rent concessions, and we'll take out forecasted loss to lease. So vacancy rate. Let's say you believe your property is going to be vacant for uh, one month out of the year. So you would say your vacancy rate is 1 12th. If you think it's going to be vacant two weeks of the year, you'd say the vacancy rate is 1 24th. Or you would express that into a percentage like 5% or 6%. Rest, rent concessions is how much you're going to have to spend to get a tenant into your property in terms of uh, for example, one month free. If you move in and you pay 11 months rent, the 12th month is free. Well, that's a rent concession. Uh, it doesn't change the uh, market value of the rent. It just changes how much you have to pay to get a tenant into your property. It could be, um, for example, we'll pay for the water or we'll pay for the landscaping. There's things like that, which are not normally done in the market calculation of market rent, but you're doing it for your property just to get a tenant. The third thing in figuring out adjusted gross income is loss to lease. And loss to lease means there's a tenant in your property, but they're not paying you rent. And so you have to deduct that from the gross scheduled income before figuring out um, how much money you actually get to keep or make. Let's look at a case study. So let's say you had $12,000 a year gross scheduled income. Remember, all of the numbers we're talking about are annual numbers per year. Let's say you figured out, I think my property is going to be vacant 6% of the time. So you would deduct 6%. I think I'm going to have to give up uh, a certain number of weeks of rent free. Or maybe I'll have to uh, uh, discount my rent a little bit from the marketplace to get a tenant simply because of the time of year that I'm renting. If you're rent Depending on the marketplace, certain seasons rent stronger than others. And the last number is lost to lease. Figuring over a big enough period of time, a broad enough uh, portfolio of property, uh, a certain number of your tenants are just going to stiff you on the rent. And that's part of life. These numbers are going to vary dramatically depending on the property type, property location, and the quality of property. You know, just stereotypically, a more expensive property has a lower loss to lease than an entry-level property, simply because people who are at the lower end of the socioeconomic uh, spectrum, they don't care about their credit as much, they're uh, living hand-to-mouth more, and they're willing to just, uh, if they get behind, they just walk uh, from the property. Um, and and that's, that's loss to lease uh, numbers. So in this particular case, I've got 6% plus 4% plus 2%, which gives me a 12% um, 
adjustment or reduction in the gross scheduled income. So I'm going to take 100% minus 12, and that gives me 88%. So I'm going to collect 88% of my rent. Another way to do this would just be $12,000 times 12% and then subtract that from 12,000. We would get to the same place. So we're going to use 12,000 GSI times 88%, and that gives us the 10,560 of adjusted gross income. Adjusted gross income is not what you get to keep. That's just um, a, a starting point for your number. In, in your uh, property, you're going to have expenses, operating expenses. And we're going to talk a lot about not net operating income in a different chapter and how to calculate uh, operating expenses. But for today, here's just the simple numbers. You take the adjusted gross income less the operating expenses. Until you understand how to calculate operating expenses, um, let's just assume that you've got a, a 50% operating expense ratio. And that number could be higher and that number could be lower, depending on the, the, the type of property and other variables, the age of property, etc. So assuming you had a 10,560 AGI, you'd subtract the operating expenses from that. We're going to assume that we've got 50% operating expenses. So your net operating income is $5,280. This has been the Hassle-Free Cash Flow Minute. This is professional investor David Campbell wishing you much success in your investing. Thank you for coming and listening to this, uh, this educational minute. And if you'd like to find out more information about how to invest profitably and hassle-free, visit my website, www.hasslefreecashflowinvesting.com. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.